Hi, this is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. In high altitude physiology, we have seen that with increase in altitude, atmospheric pressure decreases. In contrast, as the person descends below the sea level, atmospheric pressure increases. Exposure to high barometric pressure exerts various ill effects on the body which depend on the depth to which the person is exposed and the amount of time spent at that depth. So understanding ill effects of high barometric pressure is important for professionals like deep earth miners, caisson workers or deep sea divers. Caisson is a large chamber used for underwater construction. Today we shall concentrate on the effects of deep sea exposure on the body. By observing this table, you will realize that for every 33 feet below sea level, atmospheric pressure increases by 1 atmosphere. This is due to additional weight of water column. So at sea level, pressure exerted is 1 atmosphere. At 33 feet below sea level, it is 2 atmosphere. 66 feet below is 3 atmosphere. 100 feet below 4 atmosphere and so on. According to Boyle's law, at constant temperature, volume of gas is inversely related to the pressure exerted on it. Hence, as barometric pressure increases, gases get compressed to smaller and smaller volume. Same is depicted in this picture. The container contains 1 liter of gas at sea level. At 33 feet below, the gas volume decreases to half liter and at 233 feet below the sea level, the volume of gas is just 1 eighth liter. This happens with the gases in the lungs as well. With increase in barometric pressure, alveolar gas pressure also rises, leading to their compression. Increase in alveolar gas pressure is termed as hyperbarism and it may even lead to lung collapse at higher pressures. Pressure also affects solubility of the gas. According to Henry's law, concentration of a dissolved gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas. Hence, another thing that happens with increase in the depth is increase in gas solubility. These two effects, compression of the gas and its increased solubility, cause various effects on the body as one moves to deeper levels. The most important gases in the body are nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Under hyperbaric conditions, each of these gases exert significant effects on our body. Nitrogen being the most abundant gas, let us start with the effects of hyperbaric nitrogen. Nitrogen does not exhibit any significant effects while breathing air at sea level. but Breathing it under hyperbaric condition exerts narcotic effects. Narcosis is a state of stupor, drowsiness and unconsciousness produced by drugs. Hyperbaric nitrogen also causes similar effects and hence called as nitrogen narcosis. Degree of these effects depend on the depth and the amount of time spent under the water. When the person breathes compressed air for one hour, first symptoms of nitrogen narcosis appear at the depth of 120 feet. These symptoms are of mild narcosis where person becomes jovial or cheerful and loses many of his or her cares. Between 150 to 200 feet, person becomes drowsy and below 200 feet, he loses the strength and his movements become too clumsy to perform the work. At depth more than 250 feet, person shows memory deficits, confusion, psychosis and becomes almost useless. Let us study why such symptoms appear at deep sea. Nitrogen is a lipid soluble gas and under hyperbaric state, it dissolves in greater quantities especially in the neuronal membranes because neuronal membranes contain more lipids. 
This alters ionic conductance across the cell membrane and reduces neuronal excitability. This table shows volume of nitrogen dissolved in the body at various depths. So at sea level, body has only 1 liter of nitrogen in dissolved form, but at 100 feet, 4 liters of nitrogen is in dissolved state. So amount of nitrogen dissolved in the body increases as per the depth. Symptoms of nitrogen narcosis can be prevented by using helium in breathing mixture instead of nitrogen. Helium is inert gas and it has lowest lipid solubility amongst all the gases. Hence, even under hyperbaric conditions, its dissolved form is just 50%. As a result, narcotic effects due to helium are only one-fifth than that of nitrogen. Helium also has lower density than nitrogen and hence less airway resistance is offered while breathing helium than nitrogen. This reduces work of breathing as well. The next abundant gas in atmosphere is oxygen. As pressure increases, volume of oxygen dissolved in body fluids also increases. Initially, hemoglobin picks it up and tries to maintain partial pressure of oxygen. But as alveolar partial pressure of oxygen becomes greater than 600 mm of mercury, hemoglobin becomes 100% saturated and can no longer pick up the excess of oxygen. As a result, now there is increase in dissolved form of oxygen, leading to rapid increase in partial pressure of oxygen. Same is shown in this graph. Plateau in the red line indicates 100% saturation of hemoglobin. After this, the slope of total oxygen in the blood, that is the blue line slope, is parallel to dissolved oxygen in the body fluids, indicated by green line. The point A indicates arterial oxygen content and point B indicates venous oxygen content, which is still higher than that of normal values. Hyperbaric oxygen exerts harmful effects on the body, which is called as oxygen toxicity. If a person breathes oxygen at the pressure of 4 atmosphere, that is 100 feet below the sea level, partial pressure of oxygen increases to 3040 millimeters of mercury. At this level, within 30 to 60 minutes, person gets seizures and passes into coma. Seizures occur without any warning and are likely to be lethal. Other symptoms of oxygen toxicity include nausea, muscle twitching, dizziness, disturbances of vision, irritability and disorientation. These symptoms appear earlier with increased severity if diver does exercise or excessive physical activity. Oxygen toxicity is also associated with excessive formation of free radicals. They cause oxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acids in cell membrane and also oxidation of cellular enzymes. This damages metabolic system of the cells and neurons are the most susceptible to damage by free radical due to their higher lipid contents. Hyperbaric oxygen also causes congestion of airways, pulmonary edema and surfactant levels also fall leading to atelectasis. The third important gas in the body fluids is carbon dioxide. As it is produced in normal quantity and is exhaled normally, it is present in minute quantities. Hence, carbon dioxide toxicity does not occur. Also, hyperventilation induced by increase in carbon dioxide maintains partial pressure of carbon dioxide within normal limits. Carbon dioxide toxicity may occur if diver does not increase his ventilation adequately during exertion or due to malfunctioning of rebreathing apparatus. Increase in alveolar PCO2 above 80 mm of mercury leads to depression of respiratory centers and severe respiratory acidosis. Other symptoms of carbon dioxide toxicity include headache, lethargy, narcosis and even anesthesia. Divers usually develop symptoms at more than 600 feet depth, particularly when they are compressed rapidly while breathing helium-oxygen mixtures. 
syndrome of neuromuscular and cerebral abnormalities that develop due to rapid compression is called as high pressure neurological syndrome its symptoms include nausea vomiting fine tremors incoordination dizziness fatigue somnolence myoclonic jerking and cramps diver also shows reduction in intellectual and psychomotor performance these symptoms may be due to exposure to high pressure itself rather than due to helium and therefore it is called as high pressure neurological syndrome okay till now we have studied ill effects of exposure to high pressure in deep sea when divers move from depths back to sea level he is now exposed to lesser pressure that is he gets decompressed this ascent back to sea level also can be dangerous especially if it is rapid leading to a condition called as decompression sickness most commonly it occurs during or soon after decompression ascent from underwater diving but it can also result from other causes of depressurization like emerging from caisson in fact the original name for decompression sickness was caisson's disease decompression sickness can also occur while flying in an unpressurized aircraft at high altitude so let us study this topic from divers point of view decompression sickness is a clinical condition due to rapid ascent to sea level after spending long time at more depth the condition is also known by other names like bends caisson's disease divers paralysis dysbarism and aerobolosis as we have already seen when diver spends long time in deep sea nitrogen is in dissolved state and rapid ascent causes sudden depressurization now the gases mainly the nitrogen which is in dissolved state escape from liquid to gas state leading to formation of bubbles which can be intracellular or extracellular this bubble formation due to depressurization is similar to that of bubble formation due to opening of any pressurized carbonated drinks initially bubbles are minute and block smaller vessels like capillaries but eventually they fuse and block larger vessels leading to tissue ischemia and infarction depending upon the site of blockage symptoms vary for example if they block coronaries it will result into myocardial ischemia or infarction in most of the cases bubbles are observed in larger joints like shoulder elbow or knee causing localized deep pain pain may be reduced by bending the joint to find a more comfortable position and hence decompression sickness is also known as bends bubbles affecting cns can cause dizziness paralysis sensory dysfunction seizures and unconsciousness block in pulmonary capillaries causes shortness of breath and pulmonary edema because of these pulmonary symptoms decompression sickness is also known as chokes decompression sickness can be prevented by limiting the rate of ascent and by following decompression schedule here is the sample decompression table for a diver who has been at 190 feet depth for 60 minutes and breathing air if diver suffers from decompression sickness then treatment for it is to immediately recompress the diver to the same pressure to which he was working and then slowly decompress him as per the protocol recompression causes nitrogen to enter back in the dissolved state and then the gradual decompression causes it to slowly enter in the gaseous state which then can be eliminated via lungs hyperbaric oxygen therapy is also useful to prevent long term effects now let us have a look at scuba diving scuba is acronym for self contained underwater breathing apparatus the term is coined by christian j lambertson in 1952 this is a breathing equipment that is completely independent of a surface air supply 
it gives more independence and mobility to divers and also allow them to spend more time under water there are two types of scuba open circuit and closed circuit in open circuit system demand valve provides breathing gas as per the demand and diver exhales outside that is into the surrounding water whereas in case of closed system diver rebreathes the gas closed system is preferred by military divers and scientific divers as it prevents their detection due to noise and bubbles in water now let us quickly summarize the important points at deep sea barometric pressure is high and causes dissolution of gases in body fluids nitrogen is the most abundant gas that gets dissolved especially in lipids like neuronal membranes and exert narcotic effects effects of nitrogen narcosis include jovility loss of care drowsiness loss of strength and clumsy movement nitrogen narcosis can be prevented by breathing helium oxygen mixture hyperbaric oxygen leads to oxygen toxicity due to which diver shows nausea muscle twitching dizziness visual disturbances irritability disorientation oxidation by the free radicals congestion of airways pulmonary edema atelectasis and in severe cases seizures rapid ascent to sea level causes decompression sickness due to bubbling of nitrogen and diver suffers from bends chokes paralysis sensory dysfunction and unconsciousness it can also cause tissue ischemia if artery is blocked slow ascent can prevent this condition and treatment includes rapid recompression followed by slow decompression as per the protocol so here we finish the topic thank you for watching and see you in the next video if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video